How should a Christian respond to a narcissist? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a special along the banks of the Little Mahoning Creek edition of Little Lessons. And it's a lovely evening here in the spot. I do have a little audio competition this evening from a hoot owl across the creek bank there. So let's hope that uh, I can drown him or her out. Uh, anyways, how should uh, a Christian respond if he or she finds themselves in a relationship with a narcissist? Now, you may or may not have ever heard that term, narcissist, or know what that is. Uh, that, that's actually a, a term that psychologists have coined to describe a, a, a particular personality disorder. Uh, just like, you know, the, the term sociopath or psychopath, well, the narcissist is a much lesser degree of those two uh, exhibits of, um, of a very selfish human behavior. But nevertheless, it's one that has been categorized by psychologists, and psychology is a science. Uh, it's been developed through observation and um, you know, human beings are varied sort, and we are spirit, soul, and body. Now, many and perhaps most psychologists don't recognize that we are spiritual beings, but they recognize that we do have a mind and emotions and intellect, what the Bible would refer to as the soul. So they've studied that, and and there are people that exhibit antisocial behavior. Uh, usually it's some degree of selfishness, and they coin terms. And actually, for narcissism, there are uh, psychologists have broken it down in, into different types of narcissism. I think there's at least three or four types. So if you're interested in it, uh, you know, you can Google it and find all kinds of YouTube videos. Um, apparently, there, there, there are so many people that are finding themselves in relationships with people who exhibit uh, narcissistic personality disorder that it's almost created a cottage industry of psychologists who are offering uh, lots of advice uh, on uh, their YouTube videos and so forth. So I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a, a Bible teacher. But um, I have studied this one a little bit uh, simply because um, I needed to because of uh, some of my own uh, encounters with, with, with people who exhibit some antisocial behavior. So a narcissist fundamentally is is a person who is just extremely self-centered, but it's but it, th th there are certain traits uh, that uh, betray their self-centeredness. They have just a, an extreme kind of a grandiose view of their own self-importance. You know, they, they, are, they are the center of the universe. Now, you, you won't pick that out necessarily right from the start in, in the classic narcissist because, uh, you know, if a narcissist comes across as very self-centered, uh, you know, that's going to hurt them ha having any chance of uh, bringing anybody into their circle and to have relationships. And so they're often uh, come across as very charming individuals and maybe even caring individuals, um, but, uh, you know, intelligent. But beneath the surface, once you get to know them, you realize that they think they're really, really, really important. And they'll be sending you clues to let you know that before too long. And if you keep listening to them, they'll be just outright telling you how, you know, you can't get along without them because they're they're just so important. And so they're kind of living in a bit of a fantasy world where, where you know, everybody else is expendable except for them. Well, let me just tell you, here's a Christian response to that. Uh, nobody's expendable. <laughs> Right. And pride goes before a fall. And this is how God uh, teaches us humility by disciplining us when we allow pride to get hold of us. And the narcissist definitely is in that category. And unfortunately, narcissists aren't quick to learn. Uh, when they do fall, uh, it's other everyone else's fault. It's not their fault. They're, they're just purely the victim. And if you were involved in it anyway, well, you're the problem, you know, and people who are soft hearted and empathetic, you know, sometimes, you know, take the blame themselves because the narcissist is able to successfully convince them that you're the you're the whole problem here. 
Uh, but eventually those people do wake up, and that's where that whole cottage industry of how to recover from uh, a narcissistic relationship, uh, that, that's the justification for it. And, uh, the, you know, any, any psychologist you talk to uh, about narcissism, they, they'll, they'll know something about it. Okay. So um, the narcissist also deals with disappointments um, and, and when they don't get their way, again, because they're, they're the center of the universe. So they usually deal with disappointments with, with anger. And it's usually beyond just normal anger. It, it, it's, it's rage and um, everyone's walking on eggshells around them because you just never know when they're going to get upset. And, you know, it shows on their face. It's red face. It's clenched fist. It's, you know, and it's, you know, raised voice and so forth. Um, and, and, and again, everyone who knows them is always walking on eggshells around them because, you know, you just never know when they're going to blow up. And what's so strange about the narcissist is that the, as fast as they can turn it on, they can turn it off. And they go right back into that charming mode again, and, and it's like it never happened. And, and people who are their victims, you know, within their sphere of influence, they, they, they're, they're saying, what just happened? What, what just happened? You know, it hit us. It hit me. And, but now it's gone. You know, did, did I see that rightly? You know, is something wrong with me? Uh, um, you know, the narcissist is really, they're often great gaslighters. You know, and if you, you, you can look up that term, it's an interesting term, but basically they're causing you to question your perceptions, that your perceptions can't be right because their perceptions are right. And they, you know, really play mind games with people. Um, I'm looking at, um, uh, you know, a, a website that uh, is, you know, all these articles by psychologists and so forth. And to look at the classic definition of the narcissist. And um, here's another one. They need constant praise and admiration. Now, as I go through these traits, uh, you, you, you know, you realize, of course, that we're all narcissists to a small degree, at least, okay, because we're all, you know, imperfect beings and frail and fragile, and we all do appreciate encouragement and affirmation. But the narcissist takes it to a much higher level than that. And if you don't give them the admiration and affirmation that they believe that they are due, oh my goodness, you're going to hear from them. And again, it's all your fault. You're not affirming. You're not supportive. There's something wrong with you. But in reality, you know, something is wrong with the narcissist. They, 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 they just have an excessive need for admiration. And so they tend to gather people around them uh, who feed them that admiration. And if you don't fall that category, you, you, again, you'll, you'll know it, you'll hear from them, and you will find yourself over a long, you know, persona non grata because, you know, that's not the kind of people the narcissist wants around. They want people who admire them and are always telling them what a great job they're doing, what a great person they are. And if you try to practice as a Christian, you know, any degree of confrontation, oh, you, you know, you're going to hit a brick wall. You're going to hit a brick wall. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry that I'm out of time uh, for this little lesson. We'll have to pick up here in the next one, do a part two on this. So all we've done so far is really just kind of begin to identify what a narcissist looks like by psychological terms. And um, next, the next lesson we'll have to talk about what would be the biblical response to the narcissist. Okay. Hey, if you've never been to heavensfamily.org, heaven s family heavensfamily.org that's a ministry that i've been blessed to uh, found and direct for about two two decades here now working in 40 nations around the world to care for the least of these and something that every christian ought to be involved in at some level all right that's what jesus taught so check out heavensfamily.org until next time may the lord bless you